Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. How real is exemption? Is there such a reality in the spirit? Is there a provision in the dealings of God with men? where a man can be exempted genesis chapter 4 verse 13 let's start from there tonight media let's walk together tonight genesis chapter 4 verse 13 the reality of exemption everyone please read we're reading to verse 15 one to read this was hold on this was a situation between cain and god are we together now cain haven't discovered that he killed his brother God pronounced certain judgments upon him and this was the response of Cain. One to read. And Cain said to the Lord, uh -huh, My punishment is greater than I can bear. 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from, the face, from thy face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass. This was his fear that everyone that findeth me hold on before we go to 15 everyone that finds me no specific i mean look at this kind of tragedy in a man's life everyone that finds you destroys you and then something happened in verse 15 the first demonstration or the second demonstration outside of the garden of eden where we see a man being exempted 15 read on please and the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him. And the Lord set a mark upon a man he had cursed. This was his request. Reduce my punishment, O God. I know I'm already cursed. You have made me by your pronouncement a fugitive and a vagabond and everyone that means there was another mark he said anyone that sees me will kill me and the bible says and the lord set a mark upon cain why lest any finding him should kill him does that mark still exist today where god can put upon a person lest any sickness finding you will kill you lest any catastrophe exemption is a reality you have to believe this in the economy of god the aspect and the dimension of kingdom reality you believe is what will become your experience it is important to listen to men of god listen to pastors it is important to be loyal to people but you are only loyal to them provided they are loyal to the word if a man is not loyal to the word i will not listen to him because he will peg me around his limitation and present his limitation to be the full portrait of all that there is in god so believing him in innocence i will still be bankrupt of certain dimensions of spiritual reality paul said follow me as i follow christ meaning if you find at any point that i'm not interested in developing myself in the knowledge of god you are authorized to divorce yourself 
from your loyalty to me and he set a mark upon him exodus chapter 8 22 and 23 let's give the second scripture tonight and then we'll begin to build exodus i like us to read it we're reading 22 and 23 together one to read and i will severe in that day read on the land of goshen in which my people dwell listen and that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that i am the lord in the midst of the earth last verse and i will between my people and thy people and it says tomorrow shall this sign be exemption is a sign a signboard leads somewhere when i get to a place and i see someone's hair and a clipper upon it it is a signboard saying there is a babbing saloon close that means when god exempts you it's a sign that the hand of god is within the vicinity at work in the life of a man it says tomorrow shall this sign what sign a division swarm of flies will come and devour people and their crops and their savings and everything but i will put a division say lord exempt me shout it with faith lord exempt me exemption is real it is a reality in the system of god there are men there are ministries there are organizations that are working in the reality of that truth and the goal of this teaching is to help us you cannot boastfully speak of triumph in a year when you are watching things kill people i think it was kenny who was over at my place briefly just for a word and then um he met me having a conversation with Ejimi. we we're discussing something very serious and then he said i think a woman i don't know maybe the woman is here a dear woman of god who lost two children concurrently i think within this vicinity lost a child they went to bury the child before they came back or i think immediately they came back another one died don't ever tell me that's a natural death no sir i know god enough to know witchcraft when i see it are we together and i will put a division a division God, please pay attention to what i'm teaching you i have taught again and let me say this the realities of the kingdom are available in christ but they are accessible through understanding backed up by obedience that's what the bible calls faith faith is not quoting scripture faith is the journey of faith starts with your understanding and accurate comprehension not just of what god has said the end of understanding is you know your role in the equation if you don't know the part you have to play you have not understood it there are so many people listen carefully there are so many people who want the things god has said but they do not they even have the zeal to obey but they are they are in confusion as to what their roles the role that you have to play obedience is key if you are to experience anything in the kingdom deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord it says to do and observe all that i command thee to do and observe not discuss and wish not desire and intend to do and observe all that i commanded this day that this blessing shall come upon you overtake you right and all of that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you so many believers are living in an illusion that because god is so mighty he will not allow them die like that after all jesus gave his only son let me tell you something this thing called the will of man is an implication on us the will of man stops god from assuming man needs his help your obedience is proof of your dependency in, on god it is costly 
to sit down and assume that after all god knows i need his help god knows i'm tired of poverty god knows i don't want dead god knows the background i come from god knows the witchcraft in my family you have to engage the world through understanding and complete obedience complete obedience say amen the next time you pick your bible don't just search for what god has said search for what he told you to do to see what he has said this is how believers become mature let me tell you something brothers and sisters many of the continual woes in people's lives is not because the outstretched arm of the lord cannot show up it is because they are waiting and hoping that because jesus died upon the cross one day he will change my finances one day he will take away evil from my life that day may never come it says there remaineth a rest hebrews 3 4 for the people of god there remaineth a rest it says if you hear his voice harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness and died the day you hear his voice is potentially the day of your breakthrough the meter of your success starts reading from the day you obey not from the day you hear you can hear god when you were 10 years and obey him when you are 40. the meter reads that you have obeyed god for one year obedience is what counts are we together not just blind obedience obedience based on understanding because you can obey nonsense you can obey what pastor said you can obey what apostle said but only hope that what apostle said is really what god said come i can give an instruction and god says let's go right that's how we're going to get the result are we together now and then you move left you see that with that kind of instruction listen two things will happen number one you stand a chance of being destroyed because although you are obeying my word is not consistent with the word of god now let me tell you something i've learned about god i've shared it here the mercy of god which is the last dimension of this series we are going to consider are we together now is such that because you obeyed me totally believing that i came from god god will remove that breakthrough and relocate it to your direction of obedience it should not have happened but because you will have to honor your faith because you received me as touching christ then god will deal with me now for misleading you so that one is between me and god but you are not going to be punished for obeying me as passive this is why you will see a man of god teach nonsense people will obey and still get breakthrough it's not because what the man is teaching is right it's because the testimony of god is upon their obedience and so god will prove himself then the man of god erroneously will justify that because it worked it meant it was correct no as you walk with god a day will come when god will say if you do it again i will deal with you i've been keeping quiet and you have been manipulating money from people the other time you lied that i sent you to a jimmy to collect hundred thousand he gave you and he got a car and you claimed it was a sign that you are you are apostle joshua selma if you tell anybody to give you money again i will personally reveal myself to you in the night vision <laughs> say obedience mary said whatever he tells you to do do it can we pray just for a minute and say lord the spirit of disobedience you know there's such a spirit pray get it out of my life oh god I'm tired of the way it has been cheating me and shortchanging my destiny. Cast it oh, Be very serious about it. There are many of us, the moment God tells you to do something, there is a spirit that refuses you from obeying. Tithe! And the spirit said, don't worry. They are just trying to destroy your money. You are sick and God says, take the communion. It's all this nonsense. I don't want to look like a child. Cast it. It's a spirit of disobedience. No, oh yes. 
we will obey yes to your will yes to your ways oh yes Lord hallelujah praise the Lord God bless you thank you very much let's do a quick revision um, in the last discussion that we had together we agreed that the first key the first principle prescribed by God for any individual any group of people to experience exemption is what we call the God first principle everyone say it after me yeah the God first principle according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 the Bible says to seek first his kingdom and I told us that when God becomes secondary in our lives we have signed in for disaster God must become first and all not first alone first and all first and all are we together anytime God becomes first alone that's not enough he must be first and all that's what gives meaning to every other thing that comes in your life and then the second thing we talked about is the mystery of kingdom service and we stop there am I right the mystery of kingdom service and I told us there are three dimensions to kingdom service we took on number one and we said soul winning and establishment please make sure you don't forget we agreed that soul winning talks of helping men find Jesus and leading men to embrace the Lordship of Jesus over their lives and we examined a few scripture I don't want us to go there I'll just quote them quickly Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall be like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the brightness of the heavens even forevermore and um, the Bible also said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 to 20, that God has given us the ministry and the word of reconciliation. Both the ministry and the word of reconciliation. And we looked at Proverbs 11 verse 30. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. And remember what um, David said about wisdom. He said, with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness it says by me kings reign and princes decree justice so part of the benefits of soul winning is that you have access to the wisdom of god that will produce results in your life so we'll take it off from there the second dimension of kingdom service that we must engage for supernatural exemption is service in the house of god write it down kingdom service service in the house of god exodus please exodus 23 and then we'll look at 25 to 26 please make sure you write it down and you follow carefully service in the house of god very few believers have been taught that service in the house of god is a system created by god for men to experience supernatural exemption exodus chapter 23 25 and 26 okay let's read it one two go and ye shall serve the lord your god uh-huh four things he will do four things i want us to understand what is your own part of the deal you shall and then when you do serve him he shall bless your bread and your water that's number one number two he shall take away sickness from the midst of thee number three verse 26 there shall nothing cast her young or be barren so we see the blessing of fruitfulness and finally the number of thy days i will fulfill all this and more just for serving in the house of god now listen carefully most believers think service in the house of god is a way to help the man of god and help his vision or help the church grow it is a very dangerous understanding 
part of the kingdom responsibility of any and every believer is to contribute actively to the advancement of his kingdom and that involves making sure that every structure and platform he has put together finds an atmosphere and an environment where people can be saved built equipped and empowered to represent his purposes and that includes service service in the house of god as prescribed by god in fact when the lord was sending moses to pharaoh this is what he said go and tell pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me serve me there are many people who have gotten more results than even their personal spiritual lives because they have subscribed to the foolishness of kingdom service are we together now many people do not know that service in the house of god brings blessings many people pity the man of god and say there's nobody holding camera kai let me not waste my nigerian tv college certificate let me just come and help them the moment you have an idea that you are helping a man of god or helping a ministry you have destroyed your potential for blessing through service are we together now every worker in the house of god is an employee by god you have to understand this every genuine worker in the house of god is an employee by god what a privilege to be in the labor force of god you work for people you don't trust their integrity you don't trust them there is no guarantee of their reward and here comes the king of the ages recruiting men and women to make sure that his house is served properly do you believe who lied to you that you will serve the king of kings look there are men who serve god for a living i'm not talking of pastors they serve their way into unimaginable breakthroughs as good as soul winning is do you know it's a terrible thing and this has been the foundation of our teaching even in this ministry that you are born again and not actively useful your energy your wisdom your creativity is not contributing i cannot sit down in a place and be comfortable that the grace the gift the creativity the the energy that god has given me is not participating in the building of the lord's house that when souls are saved you cannot say my energy contributed my wisdom contributed to making this happen i was part of those who set the sound for those outside to hear the word of the lord and be saved i'm part of those who clean the altar to make it conducive i'm part of those moving around when someone fell under the anointing as that demon was flying out of his life i held him if your energy cannot be accounted for as being used to serve God you qualify for disaster it's not a threat it's the truth Job 36 verse 11 read with me people of God Job 36 verse 11 Job 36 please give it to us Job 36 verse 11 one to read if they obey and serve him uh-huh they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure what's the condition if they obey and so if bill gates money if bill gates energy if bill gates institute is contributing if zuckerberg's facebook is contributing to advancing the kingdom he qualifies to profit more than a tongue-talking christian whose energy are we together now if they obey and serve him the moment your energy you remember the bible says love the lord with all your heart uh-huh with all your might all your strength everything about you must contribute in that process you can't say i love god that no 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 
the worship songs that lift the spirit of men did they come from your secret place or are you just a recipient you came to the house of god and saw chairs cleaned and you argued and fought with people and sat down and god is watching when i was falling down why didn't you catch me you just allowed me to fall down like that and god is watching listen you can serve your way out of any cause and any yoke i've said it years years and i will repeat it again i i don't want to use the word fear like dread but i have a great respect for people who serve me in christ and serve god because i know they are walking their way to an enviable dimension service Malachi chapter 3, 17 and 18. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best I'll do my best for you I'll do my best I'll do my best I'll do my best for you My best Lord is everything I have My best Lord I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. These guys don't know the song. You made me great. I give all I have to you. Yeah, you made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. Listen, this used to be our national anthem those times when we were preparing for crusade. We would sing it and dance as we walked ourselves out like fools it was a song i wrote as a love song to god a a declaration of my surrender how could i give him less you know when you go to buy clothes they will tell you there's this type but if you really have money let's climb up there is a section i don't have that kind of thing with god everything he finds is all of me mm. service Malachi chapter 3 verse 17 and 18. Let's read it. One to read. And they shall be mine. Uh-huh. In that day when I shall make up my jewels, I will spare them. Read on. As a man spareth his son, not that loves him, that serves him. Next verse. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked uh-huh between him that serveth god and him that serveth him there is a difference so sister don't let anybody fool you and say keep serving all these stupid people that's how everybody will marry and leave you just hold on god will give you a man that is equivalent to your salary of 30 years while the rest are there using whatsapp to connect and arranging you are serving do you know sometimes people can mock you as you serve god they'll say you are serving god so that you get husband is that not a good reason is that not a good reason is it not better to serve god and be sure of what he gives oh come on now many workers in the house of god are turned to be fools because they spend their time they spend their energy and when people who don't understand spiritual things look at them they say but Abba, Sam, 
you are underutilizing your potential that's what they say simply because in many circles maybe the people are not staff of the ministry and may not be receiving anything like a salary and so men you see newspapers insulting men of god and say the labor force they should have employed they now get people in many churches while they are building you will see wealthy people come and they are trying to put it and they insult the men let me tell you certain things about your service that makes it fruitful number one your service must be willing if you serve god out of compulsion you will never receive a reward from it please understand this this is why as a ministry we never coerce people you don't manipulate people using courses and say if you don't say no 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 that's that's manipulation if there be first a willing mind willing mind service it must be willing number two it must be with joy it must be with joy you don't serve god with joy forget about your reward believe what i'm telling you grumbling all around say oh, today is tuesday again we are just going to pray only god knows where apostle is we are just suffering to pray for him and he's enjoying let me tell you you speak like that god will punish you and the covenant i have with him will punish you two things against you very bad statement and when you stand ba 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 and there you see people pray all their heart and say why are they doing this did they charm them that's the same way when they are enjoying the blessings and you talk god will say keep quiet thank god you saw them when they were praying like fools brothers and sisters i show you the 21st century investment serving god serving god banks will not teach you this oh serving god wholeheartedly with all your heart you are giving god everything you are sweeping the house of god and you know sometimes i watch these people when the power of god begins to move and sometimes people are around under the anointing coughing all kinds of things and you see all those ushers coming and i'm saying my god look at this sometimes they are there scrubbing the toilets cleaning the toilet people with dignity and respite and their reputation they throw it on the ground just because of the house of god if you were god will you leave them like that please answer me if you've been evil no i think i'm compassionate enough to see someone who is serving sincerely and not let him go hungry let me tell you something if you know you are serving god especially in this ministry wholeheartedly you have a right to claim a reward i teach the leaders you can go before god and say lord i am in your payroll no witch no devil no darkness i'm serving lord i swept your house with sincerity lord i was cooking the food this is the evidence of the firewood this is it this pain is a sky is a testament lord when i was given an assignment to lead prayer i did it with all my heart unto you when i was serving as a head of department it's not i service with joy the bible says shall you draw there are many angry preachers when they come on stage you know they are angry as though the members are not blessing me i'm here blessing you and you're not please pastors don't harass any member they didn't call you go and meet the person who called you don't harass any member with money and all of that do you know let me tell you something let me digress and talk about this money thing if you manipulate people to bless you number one that money will never be useful to you and you rob them of their blessing the secret of being blessed from people raise them raise men not money raise men empower people pour your heart and teach them everything and they will surprise you some of you will build me houses in the future no 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 you will you will it's not whether you like me or not you will be too blessed to forget about me it's a programming something is happening to you i know you think i'm just motivating you 
and then tomorrow someone will be angry and say what is it about this guy you know let me tell you let me teach you a secret of greatness find people who are weak and start investing in them grow with them they, you can change their future but you can't change history your name is already imprinted in their starting up days not that you see somebody who you did invest in just because he has a car you say is my son are you stupid what did you contribute in his life that's why nobody calls a blind person his son nobody calls a deaf person my daughter because they are looking for privileges but there is a way you will bless somebody and pour your heart and they say lord bless me let me find something to do to this person true wealth is men the result of their impact and their gratitude to you for changing their lives all this run around one two you have not said anything you are saying sam i've been seeing you changing clothes and i've not eaten of your your reward that's 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 a that's a lot of foolishness no god is my witness and i say it in the open that i don't have any special person that i corner and say please you are a, a, an elite a group of people you are the ones who will be servicing me that's why i walked the word for myself you see why it's good to be blessed so that you can preach and not depend on anybody who tells you preach on on enemies then they change your message simply because they, they are buying generator you carry your generator and go away with it never mix money and ministry you will be doing a very foolish thing and not every seed is collectible some seeds are your birthright please don't be foolish pastors i don't know why i'm speaking to you now not every seed is collectible some seeds are you are collecting your dignity you are you are you are trading away your dignity and your destiny you must discern not everything is worthy of receiving Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field let's continue service in the house of God it must be joyful God is my witness I know God be my witness in the midst of your people I have never I have never since god began to walk with me way before koinonia and this i have never for once turned and complained and say god kai this ministry friday again or this day again no those who are close to me know that my work schedule will take the grace of god otherwise you'll fall down and die one day and i do it joyfully tomorrow we're in gombe preaching again and casting every devil out and we're happy I do these things not because any man is paying me i do it first because i love him but i know that it is a mystery do you know let me tell you something do you know what people call job is simply the rat race of trying to make ends meet when god really blesses you you find out that there's not much to do in life truly truly there is not much to do in life i think it was during the leaders training i was teaching them this when you are really blessed if your salary is hundred thousand let's even be fair two hundred thousand per month in one year that's 2.4 million in 10 years that's 24 million right all things being equal in 20 years that's 48 million so you are working and that's what you plan to get if god gives you 60 million now you will get up in the morning when people are working you just be thrown in and say what exactly do i do today so you see that listen this occupancy we claim to be busy is simply we are trying to look for money to build so you have a 10-year project to build a house and you get it one by one but you can serve your way to a god who does not pay a fixed price he pays according to his riches not according your boss pays listen listen don't think i'm flattering you when you are in god's payroll laugh love for be happy service there are many people who have cheated themselves to serve your way into that child i've been burying for five years 
and you sit down and all you do is just come and sit down and be pulling your mouth and say Kai why is the house of God hot today and the devil says continue this is the kind of people we like there is a way you can sweep any nonsense out of your life as you sweep the house of God and people are looking at you and saying ah, ah, all these guys apostle is standing they are standing how about even the ladies are standing do you know even during night vigils they stand what kind of punishment is this they say look at how church has torn your head and God here you know God hears people yeah Lord I do it as unto you I'm tired but I carry the chairs yes I'm tired but I carry the chairs I was I sometimes I look at the ushers and they are so trained in my opinion I think our ushers are one of the best trained ushers in terms of sensitivity truly speaking and response to the spirit I have traveled to many places great churches big churches and it's surprising when the power of God begins to break out because most times the power of God breaks out at special events so the people know in koinonia anything can happen I can be talking now and somebody is flying up before you know it there's an usher there they have the sensitivity it's a training all that training just for an usher that's the training of a pastor when you finish that training should you be an usher to be that sensitive to hold people but he's watching brothers and sisters hear me i remember and i always share this there is none of us today that just got up and started ministry every one man of god that i know especially those who came out of zaria you can trace their history to times of dogged kingdom service I jokingly used to tell people i think 1994 95 thereabout i used to play keyboard for a man called reverend emmanuel amechi annie power praise chapel they started it we would have our local assembly and i would trek with my own keyboard i would carry it and go there and i'm just playing little did i know that one day that little shepherd will also become king because that's how he watches you are behind the throne you better leave it and stay and focus on 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 making sure the sheep of god is healthy many of you just eye every throne you see that's why you keep fantasizing the secret to the throne is in your servicing the sheep i remember i would play keyboard for them afterwards they would just come and hug me bless you and on my way home trekking I always say this only two things I received only two things from that ministry wonderful people don't have any I don't even know where they are today during the launching of the man's cassette no CDs then they gave me one bottle of Fanta and one free cassette that's all I got for laborious service I carry my keyboard by myself I walk like a madman and I get one bottle of Fanta and and uh, and cassette he was into prisons ministry but God was watching you see that many of you just see before you start admiring people find out their track record they have a track record of service genuine service koinonia is where when people come they throw away their golden crown nobody comes to do any big man you are either serving God or you sit down there. Don't come and say, I am a, you don't come here outside and say, please prepare a special seat. And if you are special, we know. Once they don't know, you find somewhere and sit down. You don't come and say, look, I'm here together with my peer. No, no, we don't do that. Kingdom service. You want to experience triumph? You must be willing to serve God and serve in the house of God. Your energy your time your zeal your gift joyfully not complaining and say i don't like my head of department tells everybody thank you except me he didn't employ you no he should say so but if he doesn't turn to god and say lord you are the one i'm serving i serve you with all my heart lord you see every time i pray here lord you see every time during the rehearsals 
I spent hours and hours. Do you know? Let me tell you something. And I want to submit to you. I consider myself to be one of the most privileged man of God of my age range and my level. I truly believe so. God has given one of the best sets of workers in Koinonia. I've told them too many times. I think you should clap. You really should clap. Hallelujah. It is difficult to find a ministry where men are very anointed, gifted, and yet very loyal and sincere and true. You don't find it. You never find arguments going on in, uh, during the leaders meeting. Uh, no, 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 no. Total submission, total loyalty to God. There are departments I don't visit for months and they never bend to the standards they are giving. The leaders serve with sincerity and truth. It's one of the secrets to my ministerial efficiency because most of the time is spent in prayer and the word and general oversight. Not going around to monitor because you suspect that this... Are, no, 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 no. Faithful people. Are we together? And among other reasons is because we sowed that seed of faithfulness. So we are not surprised. Do you serve God joyfully? And have you been indoctrinated and laughed at? Sisters, I speak to you particularly. Because there is this madness that flies around. The moment they see a young lady serving in the house of God. People just look at her. Those who say, ah, she's just serving because of husband. Others are saying she's just serving because uh, all these ladies just wasting away Jare. Look at a fine girl like this. Will now come and make herself an idiot in church. Who told you the house of God is a place where destinies are wasted? Who preached that to you? Where did you get that indoctrination? That the house of God dries up the potentials of people. Let me tell you, the future, some of you, what you are doing now is already the price for the future. When you see men running around, God will say, I forbid you. You have served too much to serve men. I'm, I'm speaking to you from my heart tonight. How can I bow down before you? And then bow down before a man. No way. No way. Hey, how can I kneel down before you? And then kneel down before a man. No way. You must serve somebody in life. Either God or your shrine where you are coming out from that you are supposed to be the next priest you left carelessly and the altar is still crying for a servant you better secure yourself serving God there are many people who do not know that service is a mystery of exemption you can't be idle on uh, uh, idle on earth a master will occupy you you don't serve God, you serve sickness. You don't serve God, you serve pain. You don't serve God, you serve a bad and wicked and foolish and stupid man. You don't serve God, you serve another demonic roaming around your family. Let me tell you, any arrow sent from anywhere will come and meet me serving. It will bounce back a thousand times. Because there is a system. There is an insurance system in God. For those who serve him. He says he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Saying, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. He said, I shall not die. But live and declare. As I'm serving, I immune myself from death. I think I was discussing with a few people um, a few days ago. Look at me. Let me say something dominion dominion is not running away from things because of fear of satan is prevailing over them and triumphing over them 
are you getting what I'm saying let me give you an instance I think a discussion came up and then um, someone was asking a question and then I tried to clarify it if I'm supposed to go and preach now and you have a vision or a dream a true vision that my car is having an accident I will still go you see I will not allow that vision stop me from preaching my limitation is only the voice of God not the fear of death dominion is to change it and go anyway that's dominion if you allow fear destroy you you will not do many things are we together yeah there are too many people being governed by fear they claim to be walking in dominion they have the money for flights they will never fly because every time they're about to fly they see something in the night let me tell you something brothers and sisters you are not glorifying God if you live a, an escapism life you are always escaping I just saw Sam that there will be an accident and then Sam says I'm not going again let's just be careful one day that ah, ah. you've not seen people sit quietly in their houses and a truck came and killed them the name of the Lord rather is a strong tower the righteous enter so as I'm driving I'm in the name the boss collides with the name before it collides with me this is my understanding and you know I travel a lot we're about traveling tomorrow now I'm saying these demons are hearing me the spirit of death is hearing me they are probably going to stand in the road to kill me tomorrow and I'll be back on Friday now you imagine that kind of frustration <laughs> apostle don't speak like this oh apostle we love you don't don't trouble them and they don't trouble i trouble them big time that's where i'm alive don't trouble them <laughs> you don't fear two people if you fear god that's enough <laughs> how can i bow down before you and then bow down before me no way How can I sing a song before you, and then sing a song before men? No way. No way. Because you are my God. He's not our God, He's my God. You are my God. It's a revelation of Him that I have. It's a covenant with Him that I have. Listen, a fish never fears plane crash because it has no business with the air. Are we together? So when the Bible says, I am far above, I have no business with certain realities. They only affect you when you dwell in that realm. I don't know how to make you believe this thing. Listen, I speak not only because God said it. I speak because I found what I have to do to make it work. When you make boastful statements like this without knowing your part, you will die like a chicken. The very next day, the cow will so butcher you leg and head together and scatter you. I've seen the spirit of death. I I've told you. Yes. I wish I were an artist. I would have drawn it for you. You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. These spirits know men. They know those who know them. It's like somebody who is from your neighborhood and goes somewhere where they don't know him and says, my father is the CEO of Guarantee Trust Bank. And all of a sudden, you just come and say, ah, how now? Let's go home. And say you are falling my hand that's how spirits work when they enter a place they search for who knows them when they don't find they start roaring but when others step in they say oh you give us where we have kingdom business to do kingdom business to do having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete see let me tell you if i were faking this thing you would have known now i have laid hands on too many people with cancer to not have received it myself 
I've laid hands on too many people with communicable diseases not to receive it myself. I have done this ministry work for a while. Medical science gives us a time range when exposing yourself to certain things will destroy you. This thing is in your presence. I do all of that. No. It's called Zoe. The life of God. There is a record that we have it. We are rising gradually to walking in the fullness of it. But it's no excuse for darkness. When we see them, we stamp them. Say Amen. But are you serving your way because not everybody qualifies to enjoy this thing we are talking about there are people who your service your service cannot rise as a memorial unto god isaiah 18 let's walk this and go to the next one quickly we have to pray isaiah 38 sorry isaiah 38 media help us Isaiah 38. Let's look at a very interesting story here about a death sentence over a man by a true prophet. Isaiah chapter 38. Are we there? Let me read it. When I get to a place where all of us will join, I would let us know. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Sick unto what? New Living Translation. Don't turn there, but our new... Don't, don't give us New Living Translation. Modern day translation is an incurable disease. An incurable disease is a disease unto death. It says, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him saying, Listen, thus saith who? Not a demon, the Lord set thine house in order for thou shalt and not live isaiah was not a false prophet he spoke from the mouth of the lord let's see something that Hezekiah did verse 2 then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the lord let's see the content of the prayer verse 3 and he said remember now O lord i beseech thee how i have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and i have done that which is good in thy sight when you read about Ezekiah, you find out that he served god with his life his resources were coming to that and hezekiah wept so lord is this how you reward your servants will i serve you and now die that men will say i served you and you killed me verse 4 then came the word of the lord again to Isaiah saying go and say to Hezekiah thus saith the Lord God of David thy father I have heard thy prayer I have seen thy tears behold I will add unto thy days 15 years verse 6 I will deliver thee and this city out of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city he reminded God do you have the petitions that you take before God and say, Lord, look at the devil destroying my family. I'm a faithful servant in your house. Lord, last week, 100 people got born again. And oh God, I was part of those who led them outside. Remember. And God arises and says, no, you are putting pressure on my integrity. I must arise and act for you. hallelujah it must be willing it must be joyful and you must serve God with diligence diligence you don't serve God with laziness and slackness you don't serve God with slothfulness you serve him willingly you serve him joyfully you serve him diligently let's go to the next one the next dimension of kingdom service so there's soul winning and establishment there is service in the house of god and then number three kingdom investments serving god with your resources kingdom investments one of the strangest mysteries of exemption 
kingdom investment it literally is an investment serving God with your resources serving God with your resources Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 popular scripture we all know it it says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord Zechariah not Zephaniah cry yet saying thus saith the Lord my cities he says through prosperity shall be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion cry yet saying thus saith the Lord my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the lord shall yet comfort zion and shall choose jerusalem my cities shall through prosperity listen i want you to know that financial resources and other kinds of human resources play a major role in kingdom advancement don't mind those who tell you money is not important in kingdom advancement no that's not true that's a wrong theology we have money mongers and we have those who are frustrated with the issue of money both of them are wrong money is important just like the anointing financial resources are important for kingdom activities and God's system is such that listen men wholeheartedly commit their lives their resources and everything to the building of the kingdom by faith in obedience and total trust and they in turn schedule seasons of untold breakthroughs and blessings it's how the system of god works my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad so whoever contributes with his resources to making the house of the lord built to making sure that the activities of kingdom advancement keep on going that person qualifies for certain blessings please give us psalm 112 verse 9 niv if we can get it psalm 112 verse 9 i love the rendition uh that the niv puts if we can have that psalm 112 verse 9 this is the reason why many people psalm did i say 112 122 i beg your pardon 122 psalm 122 verse 9 i like us to read one to read for the sake of the house of the lord our god i will seek your i seek it not just to buy jeeps and cars houses vacations that's too small a reason to subject yourself through the stringent laws of wealth but it is for the sake of your house i will seek your prosperity I'm trusting God to bless me with resources oh God so that I will contribute in getting your activities done listen please the message of prosperity is not a demonic message there is such a message called the message of prosperity and it is not a demonic message it may have been taught selfishly it may have been taught inaccurately but that does not stop the fact that there is such a message and it is part and parcel of the truths of the gospel that believers must learn and know is God's economic system where people empower the advancement of his kingdom and receive rewards listen listen kingdom investment has nothing to do with just tithes kingdom investment is not tithing kingdom investment is not worship offering kingdom investment is a sacrifice a commitment between you and God to commit your resources on a continuous basis to seeing that his house is built to seeing that his kingdom is advanced the gospel is preached lives are saved this is a commitment it is not a special thing that you gather believers and say okay right now all of you bring one one thousand naira 
it is the inaccurate understanding of the things of God that sometimes will have to necessitate those special events. Listen, part of the financial system of my life, every major money that comes to me, I know that investing in the kingdom is part and parcel of my spiritual growth process. No special event. If X amount comes to me, my tight God's portion is going. I will never come to the house of God empty-handed. I come with my worship offering joyfully. There is a portion for my parents to bless their life. There is a portion to bless people and improve on their lives. But then there is a huge, and I mean huge truly, for the advancement of the kingdom. I have a list of men of God. I have a list of ministries that I sow into their life perpetually, continually. Some per week, some per month. Continually. Except resources don't come. Not be, Some of them don't even know me. Kingdom investment. With all humility, and I say this just to let some of us know, not just to brag or make noise. There are many programs that have happened in this city, many programs that have happened around this nation and parts of the world that I just keep quiet. I just carry a seed as God directs and I say, you go and sow. Go and give that man of God. Sometimes I say, just tell him no problem. There's no need announcing it. Sometimes I say, don't even tell them. Just go and sow this seed. And I'm happy to see that my seed is saving souls. I'm happy to see that someone's life posters are printed through my seat I'm happy this water now is probably someone's seed you see that this pulpit right now is someone's seed a commitment to contributing resource wise to see in the kingdom you don't have to wait i keep challenging believers listen i wish i'm not the one teaching you this but i love you too much i have a scriptural obligation to teach you the truth and that i will do regardless of how you feel i will teach you the truth don't think this is some system to coerce money no 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 no. i fear god too much to do that but i have to tell you the truth because it's what i'm also doing a true kingdom investor finds a need in the house of God he's not told about the need you find it the same way you find a need in a rich man's life out of psychophancy to get project I say honorable I've seen that you've been wearing only two shoes and he says you won't believe that I have only three he said I brought five you see that you brought five because you are hoping that you will buy relationship and it will work for you hallelujah find a need in the house of god look three of us let's come together koinonia needs more cameras how much is it x amount let's come together let's do an inventory consult with these people the house of god oh i think that i have two thousand naira, and my two thousand naira can buy three chairs in the house of god you come on friday dancing with three chairs three breakthroughs in your life as you drop it a sinner sits on that chair and the fire from heaven falls on him as he's getting born again let me tell you god is issuing a warning he sat on that chair to be blessed find a need don't wait until you are told you find a need ah, i look at this what can i do find a need but many believers don't they just sit down you need to see how believe offering time is, is one of the most irritating time in many churches offering time and somebody just brings out something and tells his wife or whoever do you have she says, no, it just, it take. they bring out 1000 they put it back they bring out 500 they put it back they bring out 200 naira the new one they put it back then they carry the old one says, oh, shall come and drop it and god is watching as soon as they finish they move straight to chicken republic and burn 5,000. Take ice cream for starters. Take all of this and call friends. Sometimes who are not godly. Let's come and enjoy. And God sees your passion. 
and then you lift your voice i love you lord god is saying you're a liar that's that's not true you don't love me god so loved the world that he gave is that same attitude that follows men in marriage is that same attitude that follows in everything when you love without giving you a liar and a hypocrite true love comes with giving passionate sincere giving let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ears when i lift up my seed before god as i sow those seeds i am happy it is my joy that i want to live my life in such a way that every month i'll be buying a bus for a church somewhere what a joy to get to a church and see and say what is your budget and they say we need a new cathedral how much 20 million and you say okay let me just have a private discussion with the pastor and say pastor just give me the plan send your engineers to supervise in three months that church is lifted quietly noiseless contribution you think god will allow men to will if you have a helper like that will you allow men kill him if your job is to pray for that person and the devil and god wakes you and says the devil wants to take his life oh no come on you will get an energy you never knew you had you will pray and say god it's better to take one of my legs than to kill that man but apostle i don't have much you will never have much you give your way to that much you give your way to that much you can sit down and say look what can I do for the worship team? We have just 100,000. Sam, this is for the dressing of the worship team. So they look good. This is to buy time for the media department. You don't have to come and say, make sure Apostle knows I'm the one. You have, you have killed and scattered and destroyed your potential. We live in a very political uh, Christianity where people like announcement and accolade. We are now announcing that Chief A and B is the one who gave that golf outside. Please, you have destroyed everything. He says, as you give, let your right hand not know what you I'm not saying there's no place of honor. Don't get me wrong. What can I do for you, my Lord? I want you to know my heart. not a question of what you can do for me but what can i do for you my that's love that's genuine love by the grace of god let me tell you and i say it with all humility i don't want you to do it for me there are people here people here I know they have committed themselves with resources to say Joshua Selman it should never it should never happen that you are looking for water and my seed does not come see let me tell you I say it with all humility I'm a blessed man I'm not talking about your money at all I don't serve God because of money not at this level God has been faithful are you getting what I'm saying now so don't think it's some coercion so that somebody will just bring an envelope no no but I'm telling you, you don't practice this, you will not be exempted though, from the woes where the heavens of men will be brass and their earth iron. Sacrifice. Don't listen to these junks that people have, have been warning you about people who don't fear God and don't know anything about God. To be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace canal people come and discuss all kinds of things you don't serve god with your resources you will serve sickness you will serve trouble you will serve divorce you will serve pain you can serve your way and vow your way i think i've shared that testimony here how that there was a particular uh, man of god it was years ago he gave this testimony a very true one him and his wife god is my witness they were in a meeting and i think they needed to roof a church or something like that and whilst they were there the man of god preaching was challenging people to sow into the work of god you know genuinely not out of eye service and manipulation genuinely and the lord just spoke to the man clearly 
that he should give up his house his real house real estate his property to give up his house and move to a rented house can you imagine that costly instruction he didn't know how to tell his wife so according to him he said as soon as he held his wife's hand she started crying because the lord had told her the same thing too brothers may you marry a wife like that oh that will allow you obey god you marry a bad wife you will not be exempted may you marry a wife if all you are looking for is figure eight and you don't open up your spirit to pick signals that god can say this is what we are doing and your wife will say i may not understand but i trust you i trust the word of god upon your life say amen, amen. and be serious about what you just had go around and choosing nonsense and destroy your life because to be carnally minded is what death you won't know now by the time the euphoria of young life is gone you will start seeing what it means to live with a man or a woman who does not fear god god says go left he said no we are going right god says go right and you perish like jonah hallelujah i believe i have had a chance to repent had he not married jezebel because he looked like a calm king she looked like a wicked demon that would not allow him he looked like a calm person but her presence there it's not a good thing so he held his wife's hand and they agreed the will of god be done how many of you know that if god gives you and your wife that kind of instruction relatives will kill you even christians they say which church first are you going to give the house that man that is already rich you, you people will never stop becoming fools in nigeria because to them giving is helping then they will now tell you we have the poor and the needy in the villages you don't give a poor man to be rich you give a rich man to be rich learn this principle you bless poor men to secure the help of God he says to answer you in the days of trouble but when you want to rise the law of honor you sow to a man that has attained the dimension you desire don't give poor people expecting to be rich all that superstitious thing that they say meet a leper and drop one naira is witchcraft you drop it you will be broke I tell you you sow into an anointing to rise I didn't sow to people less than me to be where I am you so higher the queen of sheba knew that's why she carried gifts and came to solomon do you bless a rich man that's why you are sowing into the anointing the very anointing that god has so you rise up to his realm people do foolish things in the body of christ with no spiritual intelligence and then we are doing zealous things but they don't bring results to us giving is helping so many people say the poor and the needy jesus said the poor you will always have with you you will always have don't be a hypocrite you will always have with you the person who is writing that junk journalism he didn't sell his ipad to give the poor he used an ipad of two hundred thousand to write nonsense about men of god you see that be careful how you hear don't let people make the truth the simplicity of the gospel become just a social discussion a spiritual man is not just a homo sapien a spiritual man hails from above with another life and another economy you have to understand this they obeyed god and they gave up the house according to him all hell broke loose everywhere went haywire you know people who insult the woman you mean you cannot advise your husband what a stupid woman the man look at your wife and children and when they went to a rented apartment gave up that i think they sold it and moved the church oh I, I hope i'm getting the story right and then i think he said that god made a vow to him that he will never need to buy a house again in his life never and that man at the time he was speaking i think he was saying he had well over 10 houses none 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 came from his money one not part and then you complete it somebody builds a house furnishes it and say god instructed me now you see people operating at such a realm you don't know what they gave up you give up things to go up oh. you give up things to go up you don't carry luggages to go up spiritually financially leadership you when you see people rising find out what they left behind nobody rises with luggages you must be willing to give up some things to rise.
in the anointing you must give up some things to rise in ministry you give up some things to rise serving God with your resources there are instructions today I don't like talking about my personal life and the instructions that God has given me but those close to me know my life is like a madman I am a reckless giver if you are close to me and we are sharing accounts you will take me to court because the lawyer will even be tired because you will not know what to say again I don't know how many times I have emptied my accounts at the instruction of the Lord to zero zero I'm not talking there is one secret one somewhere sincerely God is my witness as a ministry we have done it there was a year God gave an instruction at the start of the ministry to empty everything I told the finance department oh yeah God said it let it go it was less than one week how many days less than one week almost ten times that amount came back do you believe this into the kingdom Lord this is for your glory there are times and I say this with all humility the finance department will send budget of another department and I tell them don't bother what a joy it's not because this is this is not my ministry this is God's ministry right I only lead this ministry by the privilege of his election but it is God's ministry but what a joy I tell them don't worry don't worry sometimes I see the concern in the treasurer's face and I'm happy I will never pity myself as to remain at my current level no what are you willing to give up to go up God is speaking to somebody what are you willing to give up to exempt you let me tell you there are people seeds I know is a covenant with God darkness will come and loom around them they will come out like smoke before the fire nothing will happen because the investments they have made for the kingdom is like it says is, is like the blood of Abel crying there is blood through their sacrifice that is crying to the heavens you try to walk against me you are you are a joker I tell you I say this with all humility you are a joker it's not even me that will fight it's the altar that is full of seeds when you hear people cry and say my altar that thing is not some superstitious thing an altar is a place of sacrifice it's a threshing floor Bishop Oyedeko, I think it was him or somewhere in living faith. A story was being given about, I think it was a woman who was a tither or a giver in the house of God. And armed robbers came. They were knocking. I think they were about to shoot the man or the woman, something like that. And I think, is it the giving booklet or the tithe booklet? The person brought and dropped it on the ground and said the armed robbers should cross it and come and kill them. And they could not do anything. When you engage them, they walk. When you imagine them, they don't walk. When you sit down and wish that they walk, they don't walk. They must be engaged. There are things I have prayed for once that came into my life with speed. There have been times in my life where I cried that God defend me and I prayed once over it. Because God said, no problem. You've got this covered, your seeds. Do you have a sacrifice like Hezekiah in this time of exemption? Lord, I want a job. Lord, everybody in my family is not making it except me. Thank God I'm a Christian. Have you forgotten that your elder one is a pastor? And still, his wife has not given birth. He's, he's winning souls. And his wife has not given birth. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hannah gave her home before the child came. And said, God, look, this is not about me. Oh. This is about you. Before the child arrives, I've dedicated him and God says, that's it. I give it to you. I know people here who have sacrificed. Please come, Ejimi. Let me tell you something about Ejimi. When we were preparing for a crusade the first time, among all of us, sorry, I'm having to say this. I know he may not like it. He was the only one among us that time that had a computer, a desktop. Right? Then he used to make shirts. The poster of the first crusade, he designed it by himself with joy as a sacrifice. And then I remember when we, that time, we needed a lot of money and, you know, we're trusting God, you know, people were sowing, but it was a need. 
and he did two things now i'm not saying you should do it but he did two things that i will never never forget number one he carried his laptop his his computer i was just passing suleiman and i saw notice and i saw the description of the laptop and i met him i said why with jesus joy he said no that laptop must go we need the money i've told you about our ladies who would climb trees they were members of the worship team they were members of welfare they were members of everything the ladies because there was no money to buy firewood then with joy they would sing we still have the videos that time people like victor and aaron aaron was then please stand up aaron aaron was in charge of protocol this aaron you see victor that you see the head of protocol he was in technical then that time they would carry wood on their head and then dance hey -oh. that was the song they used to sing hey -oh. dancing hey -oh. my season has come i remember hold on 11 years ago 11 years ago pouring their heart to the kingdom are we together see brothers and sisters i remember his mother dear mother of blessed memory one silver watch the most expensive watch then i had ever used remember when his mom went to london and bought it and said they should give me the day god asked me to sew that thing i wanted to die but i still gave it hi god but i get it i mean it went i'm glad it went glad it went it would have been the only one i still have till now the mother alongside other women in lagos mobilized welfare packages remember and they brought all of that i remember that time aaron we went with two luxurious buses when we were going to for the for the crusade in abuja how they mobilized it i do not even know we're praying and planning bless you and thank you jimmy so don't be surprised when his children are intelligent and happy he served his way to that his children will never beg for bread not when i'm alive even if he decides to be careless with his life it's too late not when i'm alive if he decides today that i will never do anything kingdom again together with his wife i say i i, I agree for you to be an extra luggage in my life let's keep going when we are talking about koinonia 10 years from now will your name be mentioned no 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 don't say don't do this not an issue of amen i'm asking you a serious question will you say will you say listen listen will you say this speaker came because my seed was there oh i remember the tie that this gentleman used right people giving their hearts and their lives graduates standing as if they are foolish you think these guys are idiots for just standing like this working some of them have come from their various workplaces and it's evening there are people who come in every week from other states it's a sacrifice see let me tell you the, the moment you find yourself complaining about the house of god know that that spirit is there to destroy you because everything god designs in the kingdom is for your good not for his good he's already self-sufficient don't forget el shaddai he said if you will not praise me it is within my power to raise up stones god don't replace me i'm still available and i'm willing there is such a thing like replacement because now I neither hot or cold, I will spew thee from my mouth. For as long as I live, I will not only praise God, my resources must join me and praise God. What use do I have? Having cars when the house of the Lord is not advanced? Real estate, real nonsense. The real estate is a kingdom estate. Traveling on vacation spending a million dollars over a week 
no except i've done something satisfactorily for the kingdom there is a minimum of amount of offering that i cannot give i will be wicked and unfair to god and to his faithfulness in my life if at this level he has brought me financially i give god certain levels of offering no there is an amount i trust god to get to a target of an amount that i give god never less than it if it is in your heart god will bring it in your heart if at this level i squeeze one thousand i squeeze two thousand give god as an offering i'm a wicked person how much do i eat with how much are my clothes and then the house of god two thousand three thousand me no there are some of you as you are sitting here god has lifted you what you're giving has remained so your giving drew you back because it said your giving told god you were not yet qualified and god said if your giving says remain i can't say you should rise remain i have given dangerous seeds in my life I have sown seeds on behalf of my parents for their longevity i have sown seeds on behalf of my children unborn i have sown seeds on behalf of this ministry ask those who know me this ministry is a giving ministry the economic system of koinonia is a crazy system that's why many times i thank god for the way church runs because if it's america i'm sure they would have sued us now say no 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 this and that and that You sow that seed and God gives you faithful people. He may not give you money back, but he will give you one person that will reduce headache. There has not been any case in this ministry that has starved me of sleep to say somebody just came and is stubborn. No. Parents, you can use sacrifice to bail every nonsense out of your children. When a woman gives birth, a man buys a jeep for her which is wonderful right when a child takes first position they fly him to hawaii rather than doing that invest in his future first and say lord this is for my child i buy this speaker for the house of god not nonsense not change not carry torn clothes and say lord i give it in your house you don't give god rubbish no you give god i will not give god anything that will not cost me anything I look forward to times oh god sees my heart when if i hear any church make noise they want something before they say anything is provided and god will open doors for you beyond your imagination if your if your purpose of financial prosperity is just to wear designers and fly private jets is too small a reason for God to rend the heavens and give you a blessing that you will not have room enough. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, don't do it without me. That's my prayer, Lord. Don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, if you're changing someone in this nation, Please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, may, 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 may it never come to a point in my life when my seed stops advancing the kingdom. Please tell me, what else will I be doing with it? Servicing sickness? Servicing poverty? As I'm speaking to you, you see your greed rising you are trying to believe what i'm saying but your greed is fighting you i wish you would push this thing away no sir god wants to help you i show you the mysteries of blessings that people just rise up god has said it's the year of trial because you are still going to see people rise up in strange ways you will see it's already happening to people you are hearing testimonies of people and you're saying what exactly are they doing that they are rising because in the world system you have they have to show you the boss and the salary slip but this one does the, the boss is invisible the business is by faith but the reward is the only thing you see 
Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Sacrifice of your life, your resources. Sometimes when I'm going for ministrations, I'm so tired sleeping in the car or sleeping in the plane and I'm asking myself, why, why am I doing this? Do I have to do this? And I just remember, it's a privilege. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. Take my body, my soul, my money, and breathe on me. He has to take everything. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Listen. If you give God your spirit, you give God your brain, and leave your pocket, you are carnal and a liar. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Are we together? My life, my finances, and every part of me is open for his scrutiny his probing and his instructions any day any time without prior notice belongs to him we're going to pray you want to be exempted there is a price i know many of you just believe i will just tell you be exempted in jesus name brothers and sisters there is a price i won't lie to you I fear God too much to deceive you. What is the disadvantage of not being exempted? Write it down. The disadvantage of not being exempted was in the scripture we considered with Cain. He said, all who see me will slay me. He didn't say all men, all things that see me will slay me. The disadvantage, the major disadvantage of not being exempted is that you become a victim of anything and everything. Write it down. You become a victim of anything and everything. Although redeemed, although potentially speaking, you should not be a victim of those things. But you become a victim of anything and everything without hope for recovery. The Bible says these people have been alienated from the life of God through ignorance. It says having their understanding darkened, they have been alienated from the life of God. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Listen, it's a risk to give birth to a child and not know whether that child will live long or not. It's too risk. If you've lost a child, I, I, my heart goes out to you. Don't feel bad. But I'm telling you, there is a way out. Please listen to me. It's a risk not knowing that you come out today and go back. Remember, there are those who have done it. We are not the first to do it. Remember our song, we are surrounded by many. They have crossed this river. There are men who have lived that long. I looked at my father and my mother one time that I went to greet them and I was just smiling. Do you know one thing I know will keep my parents long? Thanksgiving. If there is anything I've learned about my father, my father is a man who can thank God in a way that will annoy you. He would thank you. know how old people thank God? They thank God for things you consider to be silly. We young people say, please, if it's the air you breathe, we thank God until the day you breathe through a tube for one month you stay and breathe in and out you will say thank you i've had the opportunity to go to hospitals and to see people i remember the most recent i think it was sometime last year went to see one, went to see one of our ladies and i went there close to her bed i watched somebody die i watched it the process At that point, all your greed follows you to the grave. All your seeds that have refused to be given, like the rich fool, 
the consequences of not using your resources he said this day he sat down and built a barn and put the money and said my soul you have money in gt bank you have money in zenith you have real estate you are a millionaire fine rest and god says thou fool your soul today today will be required of you money does not follow men to the grave are you hearing what i'm telling you pay attention and leave and you know that your life will be great oh i'm standing today now one shoe one bag one room one stove one pot but i'm sowing my way is there a guarantee that tomorrow this loss will work for me and then i will be the one to be able to turn back and be a blessing ask me i have the answer that's how we rose that's why when people are bragging and saying we are this we are the intellectuals have had this we went to this some of us know how we came we served our way through the mercy of god and look what god has done today do you know why it is marvelous in our eyes because it is the lord's doing if it's a man's doing is too small to be marvelous in your eyes you are marvelous here you are marvelous here. You are marvelous here. Marvelous here. Marvelous. That's what men will begin to say about your life. That you are marvelous here. You are marvelous here. You are allow any man despise you you may not have it now but you are walking your way sister you don't need to prove to anybody you can buy nothing the word of god will prove itself continue you may not have what it takes wear your one shoe honorably don't borrow anybody's shoe and tie to prove any point there's too much truckload of proofs coming in the future i know you're a man of god you have only one tie iron it with honor and so so into the kingdom don't buy suits you are not wise if you do that no i want to package myself so that i will look like apostle you are cheating yourself you won't look like me soon let me just tell you the truth you will between me and you is a ladder of obedience you will have to climb it diligently and by the grace of god my job is to shorten your journey not take it away that journey is there you will walk it that's why i don't pity people when they cry sometimes it's good to let the tears roll i love you but i cannot stop your journey i can only reduce it so sometimes people cry and say apostle nothing is working and they think i will clean the tears i say no let it flow because to, if it does not flow you will not clean somebody's own it's not wickedness there are times i've seen people in situations i want to bless them and the lord said no don't interrupt what i'm doing in their life they are, I'm, I'm showing them something and I'm saying Lord but they know I can help them say no no I'm teaching them trust just like it's happening to someone right now every door of your helpers have closed God is saying is deliberate don't even try to pray for open doors because I'm the one closing it to teach you I'm teaching you how to rejoice in the storm I'll praise you in the storm remember I will lift my hands you are who you are no matter where i am and every tear that falls you hold in your hands listen let me tell you something i'm preaching a message to you now koinonia don't be ashamed of your tears let it flow let everyone see you cry so that when you rejoice they won't say you cheated you followed the laws you cried mommy you may cry but cry in faith cry honorably as you sow the seed there is he that weepeth bearing precious seeds i remember the day the lord asked me to sow 80 percent of my clothes everything 80 percent 80 percent of everything before then he had asked me to give everything i've shared with you the testimony 2007 in portacot 
I carried everything I had home and abroad plus the rechargeable lantern. That was all I had. Laid my hands and prayed on it for three hours, dragged it to church. Then God decided to disgrace me. I was in the overflow outside. When people were giving, God said I should sit down. When people were now giving cars and lands, when they finished, God said you can now go. I was moving. Ladies were looking at me. Guys were looking at me. But I was looking at my future. Oh yes, I was. Oh yes, I was. And I went and dropped that thing. The bag was not, I don't even know what they did with it. When they dropped that bag, I went back and sat down. I did it for his house. And the Lord spoke to me and said, My son, from today, you have entered wealth. Men walk by mysteries. My mother is one of the happiest people around. It's not just because we are alive. It's because of the quality of the children she has. We are discussing with Ejimi today. I bless my parents till the day Jesus comes. Till the day Jesus comes without fail. Whether they obey scriptures or not, I am obedient to them. The same way the priest, they, they receive tithes on behalf of the Levites, have received it for them. May you do that for your parents. So may your obedience today make your parents live long so that you will take away this stress that is killing parents young now. You see a parent 70 years they can't walk because the son at 40 is still coming. Mommy, please, can you borrow me 100,000? I say, How much is my pension? He said, Just give me. Are you determined to be exempted? We're going to pray. Sister, take my message seriously. Barrenness is still real. Barrenness does not just come on bad ladies who live wayward lives, there are sincere people. You can start exempting yourself now. Don't wait until the day you get married and try and try and try and nothing happens. Gentleman, don't wait until the day a landlord harasses you. You say, I'll start giving. Start now. Don't wait and say, Apostle, but I've, I've not, I'm not even in a relationship. That's the good time to start sowing that seed. Your seeds can go ahead of your future. Lord, I carry these sacrifices for you. Ask Ejimi, he's a witness. What did I do with all my scholarships? Not once did I, I was on two scholarships. I was on Mobile, I was on Totafina Elf, then they used to call it. Then there was no GT Bank in Zaria. We we'll go to Kaduna and cash it. Ask him, he's a witness. Everything went for the kingdom. Other people were buying laptops, they were buying this. I used my scholarship for the kingdom. Behind every story, every glory there is a story don't just sit down desiring men's results this is what this covetousness in the body of christ oh god i like a jimmy's watch i like this i like pastor alpha's shoe stop those things that that's not how to claim you claim through obedience obedience we are really going to pray seriously because i want you to be exempted listen to me brothers and sisters the danger that looms around there is real danger psalm 91 tells us there is danger on your children born or unborn from the womb now children get mysteriously sick father does not have that sickness mother does not have that sickness from that period of conception to delivery the child comes out with one kind of nonsense I remember one of our ladies who gave birth to one baby he later died you know I remember them meeting me they gave it to the baby the baby was an imbecile you know nothing neck will not move hand will not move nothing and I remember the pain the mother used to go through I went back to God and I said Lord what happened what happened and then I told them I said look sacrifice is the last bus stop in this kingdom when all else fail you sacrifice is a master key it will tear that heaven open i show you a mystery there are times i've come to certain places that i know some doors will not open i prayed they did open i fasted they did open and i reached out through intelligence i took seeds that shook heaven and i swung those doors open 
Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon said, gather me 1,000 animals. They said, sir, are you dashing people? He said, don't ask me any question. Bring knife. Slaughter them. Number one. Number two. He said, spill the blood. There was a field. God kept watching. He said, let's watch how far he will go. When he got to 500, he didn't stop. God said, my God, what is this? Who is this man? Who gave him this kind of heart to sacrifice? Immediately, God came to him and said, Solomon, you called me. Sacrifice has a voice. It can call God. I'm telling you a mystery. Some of you are in situations right now. Your education cannot bring you out. It will not bring you out. You are in a situation where you are about to break through something. The pastor in your family with all his anointing did not, was not exempted from that trouble. Bad luck. People rise to certain levels. The moment they reach there, they crash. You are number seven out of 13 people. Nobody's walking. And you say, I got first class. You better switch. There is a mystery of exemption. Everybody that married in your family, the lifespan of the marriage was four years. They prayed in tongues, the marriage is scattered because there is a spirit covenanted authoritatively. It takes sacrifice. I have done this for myself. I have done this for Koinonia. Hi. Brothers and sisters, you are sitting on blood. You are not just sitting on chairs. You are sitting on tears. You are sitting on sacrifices that brought you. That's what brought you here. It's not Joshua Selman's revelation. Sacrifice. Many people cannot do this thing. It's hard. That's why very few are exempted. I never told you it would be easy. I won't lie to you. There is he that weepeth. There are things this man has done. There are sacrifices. I remember one time, I'm sorry I'm having to say it. He carried a seed together with his wife. And I knew this was a serious seed. There are people here who have done it. Sacrifices unto death. A kind of sacrifice that when you finish, you say, God, I hope this thing is right. I hope it works. I told you about my mother. My mother almost brought tears out of my eyes. I think it was towards the end of last year. She said her death will. My mother said if she dies, any benefit that will come, they should transfer it to Koinonia. A woman alive, covenanting her will for God, where is the devil that will kill her? That's the realm when you say, for, for me to live is Christ and to die is God. Listen, we rise in this kingdom through sacrifice. We exempt ourselves through sacrifice. Strange sacrifice. I have watched it open doors for me. I have watched it open doors for people. Great men that you see in this nation. The secret is not just the sacrifice of prayer. Their seeds have gone. If I tell you I don't practice this, I, you, I, you, I, those close to me know. I am a bank of walking seeds. Nothing just stays idle. I send it to my future. I send it fast. I may cry sending it. Hallelujah. I was talking to a Jimmy and I was telling him, I said, I have so much in the charge card in my phone. I don't know what to do. He asked me how much. I said 41,000. What will I do with a recharge card? My phone loaded with 41,000. One naira is not from me. One naira is not from me. What will I do with it? You are not ready for blessings till your seed speaks. Oh, you mean you are enjoying? No, no. When blood touches the earth, heaven must answer. Who said your family will never be rich? There is this cause of poverty. And you have been giving, you just give 10,000, 10, give 10 naira. You are not ready to move. Oh, let me tell you the truth. There is a day you come and say, Lord, my children, I served idols. My father served idols. It was in idolatry I gave my life to Christ. I've not even stabilized my stand. I know these altars are fighting me. 
Therefore, I lift up a fortification. Gather unto me, my saints. Psalm 50 verse 5. Please give it to us. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. A covenant with me by sacrifice. Listen. You are at a phase in your life where you should not pity money. Listen. Listen to me. Wasteful spending is bad. But fearful spending is demonic. You don't spend your money buying shoes. Spend your money breaking altars. Spend your money breaking covenant. Leave all those shoes. Don't be foolish. They will come. Prove any point to anybody. Lord, I have watched my elder brother rubbish. I watched my elder sister. She got married and got mad this first day. This will not happen. Oh, I know it will not happen because I'm in Koinonia. If you don't do what Koinonia people are doing, you will be surprised. I'm showing you the secrets. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. They will sit with you like this and tell you they are coming to jail you. Coming to take you to prison. Coming to take you to this. You cannot pay your rent. Your sacrifice. That's when you see that sacrifice is powerful. There is a lady, I don't know if she testified. I have the text message in my phone. I shared it with you, Jimmy. Two days ago, her mother practically died. And the girl said, no, 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 no way. And she caught, I think she may be a worker or so. She sent a text. I told her to come and share it by herself. I don't know if she was a worker or whatever. And do you know, this lady said, she said, Kai, I can't use my faith again. Everything went bad. And she sent me a text. You know what she sent? She said, Apostle, I can't use faith. I use the covenant you have with God. Do you know what I did? I put the text. I told you, Jimmy, what I did. I put the text and I threw it on my bed. I said, Lord, look at what this lady said. Her mother came back to life yesterday. Yesterday. The text is still in my phone. Take over. Take over. Lord, I've come. Hallelujah, I have come to the end of the end of greed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of Listen, listen, till today they serve idols in my village. Till today they serve idols in my village. With the reign of Christianity, you are not the first to have causes. I told you demons used to oppress me as a man of god anointed healing the sick i went to pastors i said what is this thing that demons come to press me in the night they said i don't have faith i said what is faith i've done everything they define faith to be brothers and sisters there are certain altars that after you have prayed i wish what i'm telling you is a lie i know you are in christ but i show you the mysteries behind the pain of men there are some seeds alone that will break some altars and smash it to pieces and in one year one year when it was time to save man jesus christ god did not make a pronouncement he dragged his son when the son went to Golgotha, when his blood dripped that's why no power the only power that can overcome god is the power that can give a son with that same condition any other deity that can turn a god to become a son and sacrifice him will have more power than god he looked around the heavens and found no one greater and he swore by himself the seed shall bruise the head the seed ah. Please look at me. Look at me. If I have preached and I have told you a lie, may a curse come upon me and my children that are unborn. If I have manipulated you for any gain, listen, I don't care who you are, 
how old you are what you read if you want to rise above witchcraft in this life you want to rise and match the head of the devil it's not just your prayer and your voice there is he that weepeth you don't just drop money like that the sacrifice is not in the money is the value on you and tie it with an expectation lord they say my womb will not open you have seen three of your sisters barring you are there jumping up and down and saying i am they are, they are not barring because they are devils they just do not understand the mystery of exemption koinonia is sitting upon this mystery that's why you see us rising by his grace those who don't understand will just think oh these people are just lucky there's no luck in this thing oh. there's no luck in this thing you will engage it there is a mystery there is a mystery that exempts men from all of these vicissitudes of life please i want you to believe it in the name of the lord god of heaven and open up yourself because we are going to do some serious prayers this night is not a night to just joke around we came to pray within the few minutes we have to pray i like you to pray remember we are exempting ourselves rise up on your feet and in the next five minutes i want you to blast in tongues as though one who is ready for exemption lord it can't continue like this lord my family cannot continue like this Pray, pray. Pray. The Lord will honor you. You are in the presence of the mighty one. You are accessing secrets that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud as and serious. Please be serious. Say, Lord Jesus. The yoke of suffering. Say the yoke of suffering. The yoke of hardship upon my family and upon my life. I command that it be lifted tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lift it out of your life. There is such a yoke upon families. Doesn't matter whether you are working or not. Doesn't matter whether you are in business or not. You keep blaming other people. Whereas the trouble is from you. Come on, believers, pray. Come on, believers, pray. So pray to Skeparatakata. Ebratala Soto Preke Shele Baranamala. hallelujah hallelujah now listen i want you to pray three major areas in your life 
where that exemption must show immediately listen there are many areas choose three areas in your life and pray this is an instruction pray it with your heart mention it lord this unfruitfulness this 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 my family mention them if it's your finances and blast in tongues and say it must leave it must leave Prophesy, prophesy, his ears are open, prophesy, his ears are open, prophesy, his ears are open, prophesy, Exemption in this year of triumph, I provoke it. In this year of triumph, I provoke it by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and say, Lord, the attachment I have to money, the attachment I have to material things that will not let me sacrifice, take it away from my life. Please pray. You really need that separation. Carnality. 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 Attachment to money, attachment to material things that will not allow you release resources. The fear of lack, the fear of resources finishing. Cause it, cause it. Malakata praskada barado shubris, ende prata la koto sobris karia. Everything given to God multiplies. It does not diminish. Everything given to God multiplies. It does not diminish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to challenge you to do something. This is not my culture, but I want to challenge you. Whatever seed you have, anything, maybe some financial resources, you can help somebody with it if you have more. It's not about, you always hear me say this, it's not, we're a very blessed ministry. I say it with all humility. We are a very, very, very blessed ministry. His grace has been faithful so this is not about money but if if you have something that you can connect with please that no matter how small no matter how little connect with something i want to pray a prayer i want to pray a prayer connect with something help somebody don't sit down greedily saying i don't know him take over over I have come to the end of myself take over Jehovah I have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah I have come to the end of my hallelujah sweetheart come I have come to the end of my son. Take over, Jehovah. I have come to the end of my son. Hallelujah.
praise the Lord. Finance department, somebody, a representative should stand for koinonia in this prayer we are praying. Because we are also a ministry that believes the word. So we are not just telling people to do it. We stand on behalf of the ministry. We are all going to, so I want to pray. And the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent. I want to pray. Please, listen. Don't give anything foolishly. Don't give anything emotionally. Are we together? Don't just carry your phones and give emotionally and carry. Please make sure everything you do is based on understanding. You don't have a seed, you are not going to hell. Are we together? If you don't have a seed, you can touch, make contact with somebody who has a seed. That way at least it can help. It's not, it's not about money, brothers and sisters. This is one of the biggest mysteries behind the life of this man you see standing before you. My life is a fountain of blood that drips. You don't kill a dead man. A sacrifice already killed him. I have enjoyed the blessings of God in my life. I have seen doors open in strange ways. I have seen access many people think it's because i'm a man of god no it's because of the principle of the world i want to pray for you lord jesus we stand before you tonight in total faith you are teaching us in this house the mystery of exemption and lord you have taught us how kingdom service can exempt men we are not doing this emotionally we are not doing this to coerce ourselves but lord in the name of jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ we decree and declare that by this seed I prophesy upon lives upon destinies from tonight a dimension of breakthrough you have never seen I release it upon you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I declare that any charm any altar any pronouncement any yoke I don't care how long it has lingered around your life you have prayed it has refused to go you have fasted it has refused to go you even danced and it refused to go I prophesy may your seed answer tonight may your seed answer tonight Lord according to Psalms 50 verse 5 he said gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice I pray if I be sent of God I stand on God upon this altar in the name of Jesus as you are holding this seed I command judgment in the camp of the enemy judgment right now in the camp of the enemy may the fire fall on your seed may the fire fall on your seed May the fire fall on your seed. May the fire fall on your seed. Shabakata la kotoso prekete. Legete kata. The Lord God that answers by fire. The God of Elijah that descends upon the sacrifice. In the name of Jesus. As it burns this sacrifice, it burns every altar. As it burns this sacrifice, it burns every charm, it burns every pronouncement, it burns every pronouncement. Therefore, by this seed, I prophesy be exempted from death, be exempted from luck, be exempted from struggling, be exempted from disfavor. Be exempted. I 
I don't care how it has been in your family. By this seed, I change the patterns tonight. I change the patterns tonight. I change the patterns tonight. Everything called dead in your life. Everything that has refused to resurrect in your life. Everything keeping you at the same level. You are growing older but you are not moving. The truth is you are not making progress. The last three years you have been at the same place. I push you forward now. By the power of prophecy. I push you forward now. I push you forward now. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill on belief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here seven children lost including twins lord i'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life something has happened to the anointing upon my life something has happened to the glory upon my destiny i'm here tonight oh god turn my life around turn my life around Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. 
I no longer fast, I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state. No. So anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive i've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you jesus christ let me give us one last prayer point father every desire i brought here tonight I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakato. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barakata barakush. Every desire.
visit me oh god completely the god who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too the god who touches my body can touch my womb too lord i insist i insist for completeness comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it, it's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone, it's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, when speed comes upon your academics, I'm praying again, the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed, speed, in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed, shalakato sadakata. Now listen, 
fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of jesus i'm stretching my hands right now spirit of the lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of jesus i declare that any operation that is not of god at the count of three by the mystery of the holy ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, blow, blow, blow like a mighty Spirit of victory, Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Cover us with your wings. Hallelujah, Madam. Listen.
for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is this the is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ please where is that man we have to hurry up there's, there's a lot to do in the name of Jesus Christ mama I decree and declare over your life that fire the Lord it looks like you are an elderly woman but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? CV and your CV, you are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands in the name of Jesus. I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me all day. Sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now. And I'm seeing letters. And I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations. Listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you. Except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace you must testify. I declare whatever it will 
translates to whether a job whether increase whether promotion i command it i declare it i decree it. in the name of jesus i command it i decree it i declare it right now in the mighty name of jesus christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of jesus christ i stretch my hands right now and i declare it's time for your family to rise i'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and i decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family i command that is gone now in the name of jesus it is gone i cause the power of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ stretch your hands towards me your hand is a symbol of your productivity and there are many of you there is no grace on the works of your hands i look and in the spirit i don't see the blessing of the lord working that's what is responsible for hardship it's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this but in the name of Jesus I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you I'm declaring still that ministry of fire many of you will be surprised whatever it is you are involved in God is about to bring grace upon it I stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of God come through your hands into your life Lord I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire, still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are in the name of jesus christ hallelujah this the prayer is for everybody eh? but this particular prayer now is for ladies the lord is showing me destinies that must be changed outwardly you are beautiful you are good looking you are virtuous you are wonderful but in the realm of the spirit is not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in this in the realm of the spirit a man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful the gate was beautiful but the man's life was nonsense 
there are many people you can stand I'm, I'm saying everybody but this is ex specifically for our sisters and it's not just the issue of marriage I'm not talking about marriage alone that there is a fragrance a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life but many of you physically they look at you and you look like you are beautiful you are this you are that but in the realm of the spirit there are powers sitting on people's destiny in the name of jesus lift your hands i want to pray for you that that force that veil must be torn in the name of jesus ah, i'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people especially our sisters i declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus i change it now in the name of jesus Listen, a man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your is your dad. Where did he come from? From high there. From high there. From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare Shalom Skapra Hasegete Barandos Kapriashata. Ente skalabra hafas kata barakoto supriata kata mande kres koda hashabari katos kada natos kada natos kada mashada kata empre kete koto koto bat sada balakata shapres kete 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 balakata shapriata kata in the name of Jesus anyone who has exchanged your destiny sir I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter hold my hands i pray for you look at me you are a wonderful lady huh but bad things continue to happen in your life huh you are a nice lady are you married i'm married well with that one. don't worry i know why i'm saying you get what i'm saying now yes, sir. because what i'm seeing this is a spirit you are a nice lady but people continue to misunderstand you yes, sir. Yes, good sir. things and people look at you in the eye of many people now you are you are a devil you are a terrible lady yes, but it's sir. not true yes, you have a very beautiful heart this is what happens when do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people a ministry can be under this captivity no matter the bible said don't let your good be evil spoken of you can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you you bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this i pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say i'm the one who is not spiritual it's a spirit my dear i want to pray for you huh? this thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong you are a wonderful lady 
Uh, favor will come close to you, but then never enter your life. Yes, sir. What yes, do you sir. do? I'm walking in a security. Uh, you are in security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. I'm running my master's. You are running your master's? Yes, sir. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying, do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare, in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is sir, I'm praying for your daughter and your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job that on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the, what is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again, in the name of Jesus, may my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, they will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. 
and Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies and see Nigerians. They want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, Do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jax is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside. We'll walk to your projector stand. Overflow two. You'll also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three. Walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in your PR department, you can join them. And then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone, and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. He 
in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing. Pastor Jex Ejimi there, um, Pastor Alpha Benga Overflow 1, Pastor Femi Promise Overflow 2. Please, quickly, quickly, let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now. Oh, 
ocean is lifting, shackles are breaking, heaven touches earth in this place. Oh, my. 
spirit in one minute those following from any nation of the world i like you to just pray we're just going to pray and speak over this go ahead stretch your hands we're praying on this request father let your people return with testimonies in the cross as the asaha sabara katosha brada gada baladaba raka tapranda gada baladabosh e pratos kada brandi gedi baladabosh father in the name of jesus christ let impossible situations be turned around by the spirit of god le katosha taprate katosha brada gede ba raka taparata paratosa de brada gede baladaba In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abounds. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto. 
unbeatable lord you will bend things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will change things tonight in the name of jesus you will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit Amen. you bring healings you bring deliverance you will bring breakthrough financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus you bring changes lord death supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit lord we give you praise we give you glory Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any request to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season If you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And in the name of Jesus, I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah. I decree and declare 
may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of jesus i pray for every family represented here in the name of jesus and i say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you had the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to it that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God that means if God does not step in for you you know you are in trouble I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year. I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying please believe it with all your heart I pray for every student here I don't know what challenge you may be having or I don't know what you are trusting God for in the name of Jesus I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them I don't care what needs to be done let it be done to move you in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again let it be done to move you There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME in the name of Jesus there are some of you who the results you have seen now 
from that result you will not get anything serious i change that result now i change that result now i change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief i change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no oh, i know our time is gone but i'm praying a very important prayer believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil to take advantage of us i declare whether by air or by land whether on bike kekena pep if it will crash you will never enter it I say it again, if that fake cool is doomed for accident, then I take you out of it. But in the name of Jesus, if you enter it, then it must not crash. I pray for your finances again that in the name of jesus the worship team sang here and said ebenezer there is a god that can help men i pray for you directly finance that's the prayer i'm praying for you now i know you love god already i'm not doubting your passion for god but the resources that it will take especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now He said, keep us, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. I pray for you. Any orchestration of evil, a trap of Satan, so that you will enter and it will destroy your life. Quarter to getting into that trap. I declare in the name of Jesus, may the Lord rescue you out of it. Two or three more prayers and we're done. Any friend in your life, any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually, destiny-wise, financially, I caught it from the realm of the spirit this night. I ate it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, there is a saying, show me your friends and I will show you your destiny. Some of us love God, but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend. You are born again, but the people that come to like you, to want to marry you, are people who don't love God. Or you are a nice, well-meaning brother, but your friend is an armed robber. Your friend is a 419er. Your friend, what? Any kind of wrong relationship, whether you are aware or not, in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. Let there be a separation right now. And I pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, may my God expose them in this season. I know you don't like the prayer, but let me pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, I say it again, may the God of heaven expose them in this name. Whatever has tampered with your love for God, there is something called first love. First love is fire, fire for God 
fire for the house of God that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said I was glad not I was angry not I was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of God is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you are a man of God that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the antichrist i declare fresh passion for the things of god fresh passion for the house of god you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to its rightful position let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m you are signing poverty with your destiny both god and satan agree that laziness leads to suffering are we together there are many of us here I, I don't hate you you know i love you with all my heart but your deliverance needs to be laziness 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 i'm not as concerned about our sisters but this our brothers you are the ones i'm talking to Sister, that doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you god is even speaking to you through this reduce those movies reduce all those facebook thing and all of that and sit down gentlemen receive grace grace to stay awake when others are sleeping believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that if you are a man here and you are a married man please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family i love you but i'm telling you the truth by the word of god you are not being responsible no matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do i need to do to feed my family let no man believer here born of god you return back home and there's no food and they are asking you and you are acting as if daddy have not paid school fees say what will i do is he responsible is he responsible before you have a child think and plan what are we going to do with this child that is coming not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people in the name of jesus i declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible i release it upon you now every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success i cancel that wrong mentality now hallelujah we speak peace over zaria we speak peace over kaduna state and we speak peace over this nation we decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere we declare that christ must be glorified in this season in the name of jesus christ and for all of you who are doing one thing or the other whether job whether ministry whatever it is i declare multiplication of results in the name of jesus christ before we take the altar call i want to encourage you please listen please listen everyone next week friday next week we're going to have koinonia on sunday is 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 our som graduation we we'll announced that shortly but on friday please listen we're all waiting upon the lord we're fasting okay 
there's no coin on here so we're going to trust god please when we say wait upon the lord minimum minimum at least minimum four o'clock if you fast and end by 12 except you are a child or except you are on a serious medical this thing if if you are not on a medical program and you fast and end by 12 i think you are lazy to whom much is given much is required six hours alone is too small you have to be serious and if you fast and all you do is sleep god too will have to forgive you because you didn't maximize is this not the fast i have commanded there is a fast that is hunger starvation but there is a genuine fast listen to messages so friday please uh, media make sure you announce it friday we are fasting and we are fasting the goal listen carefully three things number one our spiritual health are we together number two we're interceding for this ministry we're speaking the next level we're declaring we're praying over this ministry are we together now and then the third you can add whatever prayer point but particularly our spiritual lives and then you are praying for the ministry and you know prayer band take note of this and all other departments take note every department should allocate some time at least that you can pray dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again.